President Donald Trump recently said, we need to double the energy we currently have in the United States for AI to really be as big as we want to have it. As big as we want to have it. But what would that mean? What's the worst case scenario when it comes to AI development and climate change? AI accelerating environmental designation. Yikes. How does AI lead to this? When I asked ChatGPT that question earlier, that one response consumed around 10 times more power than a Google search. Why? Traditional Google searches work by retrieving information from existing web pages. It's a relatively fast and efficient process of matching search to information that's already out there. Generative AI, like its name suggests, generates new content by running intense algorithms on vast amounts of data. Each query requires complex training and computation to create a new response, which is why it relies on specialized hardware like GPUs. To put simply, a traditional Google search is like looking up a word in a dictionary, but an AI query is like having a computer create a new essay on demand. Every time a user inputs a prompt, ChatGPT's massive language model processes it using an estimated 2.9 million kilowatt hours of electricity per day. The average US household uses about 29 kilowatt hours of electricity a day, so in a single day, ChatGPT consumes 100,000 times more power than a typical household. How does this impact the environment? Well, the huge increase in demand for power consumption by AI is already leading to environmental consequences around the world. In the US, President Trump has pushed for a return to fossil fuel production, including oil, gas, and coal, in part, to meet the growing demands of AI. And in East Asia and Europe, the rising energy demands from AI are creating their own unique challenges. As mentioned earlier in the video, AI relies on heavily specialized chips like GPUs, so as AI booms, so does the chip making industry. This causes a sharp increase in electricity consumption, with electricity needs to manufacture AI chips increasing by more than 350% from 2023 to 2024. And in recent years, East Asia has become the global hub of AI chip manufacturing. To learn more about the impact on the region, we spoke to Katrin from Greenpeace East Asia. Hi, Katrin. Hi, I'm Katrin. Nice to meet you. In South Korea, the electricity consumption from AI chip manufacturing more than doubled between 2023 and 2024. And in 2024, Taiwan's AI chip manufacturing used enough electricity to power almost 100,000 households. This is an astonishing 350% increase from 2023. What does this increased demand mean for the electric grid in those countries? So in South Korea, the electricity consumption of semiconductor industry is projected to reach 71 terawatt hour by 2030. This is a 145% increase from 2021 levels. And by 2050, the Yongin area with densely packed semiconductor fabs is expected to require 25% of total power demands in the metropolitan area. Demand for electricity also threatened Taiwan's power system. The electricity usage is projected to increase by 12 to 13% by 2030, which puts a huge stress onto the local grids. The numbers will just keep growing. Global electricity demand for AI chip manufacturing is expected to surge nearly 170 fold by 2030 compared to 2023. Besides the issue of power constraints, the bigger issue with AI chip manufacturing is that the electricity grids it relies on are powered by fossil fuels, meaning AI chips are being produced using dirty energy, leading to considerable amounts of carbon emissions. In 2024, this reliance on fossil fuels has led to a more than fourfold increase in global emissions from AI chip making compared to 2023, and that figure will keep increasing if no changes are made. In 2030, the emissions will reach 16.8 million metric tons, roughly the equivalent of the annual emissions of about 3.7 million gasoline-powered cars. To meet the electricity demand for AI chip manufacturing, some short-sighted solutions have been introduced in the region. In the summer of 2024, the South Korean government approved a new liquefied natural gas combined heat and power plant for leading chip maker SK Hynix in the Yongin General Industrial Complex. They also plan to build 3 gigawatt LNG power plants in the National Semiconductor Cluster to support Samsung, another leading chip manufacturer. Taiwan is also planning to expand fossil fuel-driven solutions, such as proposing an LNG plant at the Keelung port. And hazardous nuclear power, once shunned in Taiwan, has also reappeared in public discussion due to surging demand. And Europe? Europe is also experiencing energy transition challenges due to the increased expansion of AI data centers. By the way, this is Jill from Beyond Fossil Fuels. In Ireland, for example, the growing network of data centers consumed 21% of the country's electricity in 2023. That's more than all the urban households combined. The energy consumption of European data centers is putting local energy transitions at risk, either by expanding gas infrastructure or by forcing other sectors to rely on power from fossil fuels. As the AI industry continues to develop, 
the electricity consumption from these new data centers could rise by up to 160 percent by 2030 and could consume up to 20 percent of new renewable energy sources. If this AI expansion is even partly powered by fossil fuels, emissions from these new data centers could rise by 121 million tonnes of CO2 by 2030. That's nearly the same as the total emissions from all the gas power plants in Germany, Italy and the UK in 2024. How can we ensure that the rapid growth of AI doesn't come at the cost of our planet's future? When I think about AI, I imagine this elusive virtual thing that exists out there on the internet. But it's not just virtual. As we've seen, it requires massive data centers that consume enormous amounts of energy. And it's created by people and used by people. Us. So the push is for the people creating these AI data centers and hardware to shift away from relying on fossil fuels. The push is for data center expansion to stay within sustainable limits, only being built if they can operate on 100% renewable energy 24-7. It's for tech companies to invest in new additional renewable energy capacity rather than diverting renewables already allocated to other sectors. It's for tech giants like NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft, Google, and Meta to transition to 100% renewable energy in their business operations and supply chain. It's for hardware manufacturers like TSMC, SK Hynix, and Samsung to strive for 100% renewable energy by 2030, prioritizing high-impact renewable energy sourcing in regions where manufacturing takes place. It's a big ask, but it's not impossible. Apple, for example, urges 100% renewable energy within its supply chain. AI is here and it will likely continue to be a part of our daily lives, whether we like it or not. So we don't want it to destroy the environment and its existence. Our choices can push the people making decisions to change. As people who encounter AI, it's advocating for sustainable practices and getting involved in initiatives that pressure tech companies to speed up their transition to renewable energy. It's sharing videos like this so other people can become aware. So unlike what President Trump is saying, the goal shouldn't be about getting global AI dominance. It should be about working together for technology to develop within the reasonable limits of our planet's ecosystem. Not with fairy tale nuclear announcements or returning to natural gas, which will ultimately lead to more greenhouse emissions and the destruction of the planet, but by striving for more renewable energy. And hopefully, with these solutions in mind, we can help shape a more sustainable future where people, technology, and the planet are able to thrive together.